Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Crazy Maths. Here with Dr. Equinomis in the journey towards eternity. It gives me immense pleasure to post my first video, Strawberries in Medicine. In this video, we are going to see about all the strawberry signs and symptoms which are more common in medicine. Those signs and symptoms include strawberry tongue, gums or gingivitis, gallbladder, nasal mucosa, cervix, hemangioma or nevus, nasal mass and skull. And these signs and symptoms are named because they resemble strawberry in its appearance and not because of consuming strawberry. First is strawberry tongue. We all know tongue has three types of papillae. Fungiform, filiform and the circumvallate papillae. This fungiform papillae is widely distributed and is more prone for any infection. Such infection leads to hyperplasia in the cells of the fungiform papillae. What is hyperplasia? It is nothing but the increase in the number of cells. Therefore, the cells of the fungiform papillae undergoes hyperplasia which leads to the enlargement of the fungiform papillae. This enlargement of the papillae leads to its protrusion. Therefore, strawberry tongue is nothing but hyperplastic fungiform papillae protrusion. It is most commonly seen in scarlet fever, Kawasaki disease and the toxic shock syndrome. Scarlet fever is caused because of group A beta hemolytic streptococci infection. The most common streptococci being involved is streptococci pyu genes. It occurs in children between the age group of 3 to 15 years. And the Kawasaki disease is nothing but medium vessel vasculitis which occurs in children below the age of 5. Thus, the scarlet fever and Kawasaki disease are most common in children. Therefore, in any children below the age of 15 years, when presented with strawberry tongue, the most common infection will be scarlet fever. And any child below the age of 5, when presented with strawberry tongue, it is most commonly Kawasaki disease. Next is toxic shock syndrome. We all know that any microbial infection, whether bacterial, viral or fungal, anything, it causes its pathogenesis by the release of toxin. These toxins are released into blood and is metabolized in liver and kidney. When the level of these toxins increase in blood, the kidneys and livers are unable to metabolize such toxin. Therefore, it leads to increased levels of toxin in blood which leads to increased viscosity of blood, reducing its flow, leading to shock. Therefore, it is known as toxic shock syndrome. The most common microbial organism involved is Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pneumoniae. And this toxic shock syndrome can occur in any age group and it is more common among the elders, that is especially the heart patient where the Staphylococcus infection is more common. Thus, strawberry tongue is most commonly seen in scarlet fever and Kawasaki disease and toxic shock syndrome. It is due to hyperplastic fungiform papillae protrusion. Next is the stra strawberry gums or gingivitis. It is most commonly seen in weakness granulomatosis, which is also known as polyangitis with granulomatosis. It is an autoimmune condition which more commonly affects males than females. It is seen in the age group of above 40 years and here the gingiva undergoes hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is nothing but increase in the size of the cell, which leads to swelling. Yeah, here the exophytic gingiva undergoes hypertrophic swelling, which is accompanied by hemorrhage that gives reddish color to the gingiva, which resembles strawberry in its appearance, hence is known as strawberry gums or gingivitis. Therefore, strawberry gums or gingivitis is nothing but reddish purple exophytic gingival swelling because of the hypertrophy which is accompanied by petechial hemorrhage. It is most commonly seen in weakness granulomatosis. Next is strawberry gallbladder. Strawberry gallbladder is most commonly because of cholesterolosis. Cholesterolosis is nothing but focal accumulation of cholesterol laden macrophages in the lamina propria of the gallbladder. The mechanism of accumulation is yet unknown. This gives the mucosa, the brick red and with the bright yellow nodules. These yellow nodules are nothing but the lipids and cholesterol. This as a whole resembles the appearance of strawberry, hence is known as strawberry gallbladder. Next is the strawberry-like nasal mucosa. Here 
it is most commonly seen in sarcoidosis sarcoidosis presents with non caseating granuloma with abundant activated macrophages therefore on the retained mucosa of the nose these tiny pale granulomas appears as dotted structure which gives us the exact appearance of strawberry therefore it is known as strawberry like nasal mucosa where the tiny pale granulomas appears as dotted structure on the reddened mucosa of nose and it is most commonly seen in sarcoidosis next is strawberry cervix it is most commonly seen in trichomoniasis trichomoniasis is nothing but a protozoan infection which develops within 4 days to 4 weeks here there is multiple punctuate hemorrhage and this multiple punctuate hemorrhage a microscopic and when seen through the microscope resembles a strawberry in its appearance the vaginal and cervical mucosa typically has a fiery red appearance with marked dilation of cervical mucosal vessel which results in the appearance of the strawberry cervix next is strawberry hemangioma or nevus it is most commonly seen in infants and the disease is infantile or capillary hemangioma it is a benign condition that is it is like a benign tumor which is present after birth it is because of the proliferation of the endothelial cell which gives us the appearance of the strawberry hence it is known as strawberry hemangioma or nevus and this capillary hemangioma may occur in skin subcutaneous tissue or mucous membrane of the oral cavities and lips as well as it occurs in spleen kidneys and liver histologically they are composed of thin walled capillaries with scant stroma next is strawberry like mulberry nasal mass it is like a benign tumor condition therefore it is different from that of the nasal mucosa here a polyp develops that is a friable vascular polyp develops and it is pedunculated or sessile which resembles strawberry in its appearance it is most commonly seen in rhinosporidiosis and chronic granulomatous disease the chronic granulomatosis disease is because of the defect in bacterial killing and the patient have recurrent bacterial infection next is strawberry shaped skull it is most commonly seen in the genetic disease edward syndrome which is because of the trisomy of the 18th chromosome here the occiput that is the occipital bone is flattened and the frontal bone is pointing which resembles the shape of the strawberry therefore giving the name strawberry shaped skull therefore the ultrasound scan of a fetus with the edwards syndrome resembles a strawberry shaped skull thanks a lot for your patient viewers don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel and any doubts leave your questions in the comment box